Hi everyone, this is Sherry and Brenna here from the Little Shop of Physics here to walk you through some of the points in Activity 1, Slinkies. That's right, Sherry. So in this activity, students will use a slinky to observe characteristics of waves. What are the different types of waves that students will observe? Yeah. Well, first the students are going to look at two different types of waves, transverse and longitudinal, and understand the difference between those two. Here we'll insert a little clip to show you what these will look like. The Longitudinal wave is a wave that travels in the direction of the slinky. You can see the compressions as they go along. And the transverse wave is usually what students think of when you first say wave. Um, it's the wiggly back and forth type of wave. Oh, so like an ocean wave. Like an ocean wave, nice. yeah. Sound waves would be an example of the longitudinal wave. They're a compression wave of the air. Um, light, which we're gonna go into a lot of detail with in this kit, uh, is a transverse wave, and what makes it interesting is it's actually two transverse waves, one wiggling this way and one wiggling this way, but Whoa. they're paired together. That's insane. Uh, so what are some of the concepts and characteristics that students will discover as they play with these slinkies? The first thing kids will have discovered after just a short amount of free play with the slinkies is that uh, when they send waves from one end to the other, there will be waves that reflect off the far end and come back. Um, and those will interfere with the waves being sent out. But isn't the interference going to cause an issue? It, it might seem like it would be, but we're actually going to use that wave interference to our advantage. If we can match the wave amplitude and uh, frequency of the waves we send out to the waves being reflected, we can set up a standing wave pattern. Huh, that's awesome. And I think we even challenged students in the write-up to set up these standing waves. Now, you used a lot of complicated vocabulary like amplitude and frequency and wavelength, things like that. So can you define some of those terms for us? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the different patterns that uh, students will set up on their slinkies, we call those harmonics. Um, and so we can make different um, harmonics of standing waves. And if your students can get to that seventh harmonic, uh, I will be seriously impressed. That's I like wasn't able to do it myself. seven peaks, right? Seven yeah, peaks. That's yeah. crazy. They so have to <laughs> wave the slinky back and forth. Really quick. work at it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and when they're looking at these standing waves, uh, waves that appear to be standing still, uh, that allows us to get a really good look at some of the wave properties, like wavelength, uh, where we can call wavelength the distance from one wave uh, peak uh, to another wave peak, or a trough to a trough. Um, we can also look at the frequency, and this actually comes through more kinesthetically for the students. They'll realize that the, the faster they wave the end of the slinky, the more waves they'll be creating oh. on the slinky. So like that seventh harmonic, those waves are going to be really, really short. Short, exactly. Okay. So an increased frequency uh, lends itself to a shorter wavelength. Um, Amplitude um, is something that they might discover on their own. Um, amplitude is how big you make the wave. So it's really how tall the wave is. Uh, throughout the write-up, uh, the word medium is used here and there. And medium is just a fancy word that means the material the wave is moving through. So in this case, it's the slinky. The waves are moving through the slinky. Awesome. Thank you for all those definitions, Sherry. Now we have a couple uh, key tips and tricks for instructors to help your students get the most out of, out of this activity. So first of all, I mean, we're playing with slinkies. We have pairs of students moving them around. You need a lot of space, so you're going to need like a long hallway or a gym or something like that. Uh, it's also a very kinesthetic activity. Your students should be moving, so make sure they take turns uh, being the wave maker, things like that. If you're comfortable with it, students could also use their phones to help record either video or photos of the waves so that they could analyze them later. Or if you're not comfortable with that, they could just use whiteboard markers or a notebook to record their observations and then analyze that uh, in, back in the classroom. Yeah. And also, slinkies are notorious for getting tangled. So have your students keep them on the floor, uh, otherwise you're gonna end up with a giant slinky knot. Yeah, and the, the activity ends more quickly than you would yeah. wish for it to. <laughs> because yeah. it has to, not, not, not voluntary. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's right, and uh, so really the most important thing we want out of this activity is for kids to experience the slinkies kinesthetically because it really sticks with them, um, all that wave terminology, and they'll come back and visit that over and over again over the next few um, lessons. Uh, but we want to encourage free play and creativity and let the students get a feel for those different variables. 
um, and then discuss uh, in their groups and as a whole class that uh, new wave terminology that they've picked up uh, through this activity. So if they discover something cool along the way, uh, we'd love to hear about it. Yeah, it, to send us some cool science stuff or questions, things like that, you can go to our website, uh, scroll down to our email address at the bottom, and then send us any questions or concerns you might have. There's also a ton of resources on our website, so you should definitely click around there. You might find something that you didn't expect. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.